The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are that of my own and are not of my employer. Nobody likes me. Nobody likes me. But that's okay, because I don't like y'all anyway. And I don't like y'all anyway. We have until November of 2020 to get our act together as a country, as a nation, to correct this injustice. And the biggest injustice in the world was allowing a foreign power to install a criminal into the White House and turn an administration into a fascist crime syndicate. That must be corrected. And we only have a little, there's only one more election we have to correct it or this whole thing is over. If you don't know what Staten Island is, it's like New York's abortion that live. I never met any of the founding fathers, but I'm sure if they were listening to Least Coast Radio right now and brand new episodes of Dies in Your House, they would agree with the sentiment. And you can follow us on Twitter at Least Coast Radio. Get us on Patreon at Least Coast Radio. Vote. Blue Wave 2020. Let's make it happen. Least Coast Radio for the least heard voices. Every weekend. We here on Least Coast Radio are trying to fight the rising tide of fascism. The noun fascism is usually defined as a governmental system led by a dictator having complete power forcibly suppressing opposition and criticism, regimenting all industry, commerce, etc., and emphasizing an aggressive nationalism and often racism. Yeah, we don't we don't want any of that in America. So we gotta we gotta stop it. We gotta put out the fire now. We stand out of boys, no joke. As liberals, not even as liberals, as Americans, as patriots, as people that like democracy. The only thing we can do right now to fix our country is use our weapons and our weapons are our voices our handmade signs and social media get the message out there voting voting is key elections have consequences if you don't know what staten island is it's like new york's abortion that live i'd be representing staten island staten island was no joke Who's in the house dies in your house. What is the word, peeps? What goes on? It is the weekend. I am Jay Porks. We are back here on Least Coast Radio with another action-packed edition of Dies in Your House. What is Dies in Your House, you may ask yourself. What is this oddball I have stumbled upon screaming? Well... This is about democracy. This is about voting. And this is about getting out the vote to an extent that has not been seen before. To remove the fascist crime syndicate that is currently occupying DC right now. A hostile foreign power installed a fascist crime syndicate. And we must remove 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 that's our focus and how we're gonna do that is by voting 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 and refusing fascism where we see it hey google what is fascism according to wikipedia fascism is a form of radical right-wing authoritarian ultranationalism characterized by dictatorial power forcible suppression of opposition and strong regimentation of society and of the economy which came to prominence in early 20th century europe yeah we don't want any of that in america i mean that's not those aren't that's not a list of american values that i just heard like, if I would have said, hey, give me a list of American values, that would not have come up. So 
So this idea that w when we slip further into a dictatorship and an authoritarian regime, people just sit there and say, oh, well, you know what? Rich people are doing good, so that means the economy is doing good. When in fact, the economy is not doing good. This is not an economy that works for everybody. And if you need any more proof, look at everybody when they're on their break at work, looking on Indeed and on Glassdoor, trying to get better jobs. People driving Lyft, people working 40 hours a week that can't afford to live, even though they're working full time. That's not an economy that works for everyone. And in a country where, you know, there's wealth inequality, race inequality, and justice inequality, it's important that we get out and vote. And it's only one day every couple of years that we go out and vote, midterms and, for, and then in the general. And it's important that you realize, and again, let me just state for the record, at the top of the show, that the views and opinions expressed on this podcast are that of my own and not that of my employer. So I just want to get that out of the way, that these views are mine, my own. So just let me know. You could have a preferred candidate that you want the Democrats to head atop the ticket next November. And that's cool. There's 20 of them right now. And I understand that we're going to have our disagreements about who you think would be better for the country, who you think would be better to beat Trump, who do you think would be better, you know, to help get us the pull some senators over the line too, help us take back the Senate, help us pick up House seats. Like, yes, we have differences. You and I and him and her, you know, we all have preferences but at the end of the day it's important to know note that out of the 20 candidates that took the stage over the past those past uh, those two nights on CNN this week for the debates out of those 20 candidates about 16 of them would be better for the country right now than the fascist crime syndicate. Okay? So I'm not here to tear down Democrats. The Democrat on Democrat crime is a thing we need to stop. And while I'm not the... I'm not a, wearing a Joe Biden t-shirt. You know what I'm saying? Trust me, that guy does not excite me at all. At all. At the same time, we can go after his crime bill, but when we start going after, you know, his vice presidency and in turn going after Obama, that's really not good for us as a party. And it's not a good look at all. It's not. I'm not a political science major, but I am a, I am a voter. I'm a constituent, a constituent. And it's not a good look. And listen, I'm not... Obama, not the greatest president ever. Like, restricted by Congress, by Republicans, by Tea Party, you know. By celebrities claiming he wasn't from this country. By Fox News. If you've watched The Loudest Voice, you know what I'm talking about. It's just... But at the same time, you don't... You don't, you know, go after him like that. Joe Biden, if he, you know what I'm saying, he's not going to, if he wasn't going to win the presidency, he's not going to win the primary. So, I'm not saying don't go after him. Crime bill, busing, but, and even in the second debate, he didn't need to be attacked, like, like, everybody was swinging at him. And I don't know. If Joe Biden was president, all that would happen 
is that I would come on the podcast and maybe devote half the podcast to criticizing, you know, policy and stuff. But at the end of the fucking day, I mean, we would not be living in, a, in the world we're living in now. It would not be the end of the world. If somebody like Bernie Sanders was the nominee, he loses 40 states. That's a fact. He is like a caricature of what he was. He was a caricature of himself in 2016, and he's a caricature of that now. He's like that version of himself that sat down at the boardwalk and had some guy draw him in a tiny car. That's what he is now. And thank you for, you know, giving other politicians these ideas on policy that they can now, that they, you know, use. You know, thank you for bringing Medicare for all to the forefront. I appreciate it. Cool. But, no. It's not a thing. Because we need to win. And that's the difference between Bernie and Biden. I'm not excited about Joe Biden, but Joe Biden has a better chance of winning than Bernie fucking Sanders. He, Bernie Sanders would lose 40 states. Dog, 40. So maybe it's time to move him out of the center of the debate stage. And I know that, like, in 2016 it was like, oh, selected, not elected. Like, they picked... They picked the person they wanted to run. Like, yeah, that's all well and good. And I know we're trying to do the opposite of that now, but, like, maybe it's a little too much. Maybe 20 is a bit much. Because I gotta tell you, it's too much exposure for people that don't need it. This whack job Marianne Williamson, Marianne Williamson was on Bill Maher. Like, we don't need... America doesn't need any more exposure... To the vibes of Mar Marianne Williamson, okay? Let her be the spiritual advisor to rich people. And also, there's so many freaking people on this stage that I'm sitting here thinking to myself, you know what would make this better? You know what would have less people on stage right now? You know what would make the format of this debate a lot better? If I was able to have a freedom dividend of a thousand dollars a month and be able to, like, that's the ant. I've heard too much of Andrew freaking Yang! talking they talk about how andrew yang hadn't got any any time to talk i know that he says he's the opposite of donald trump because he's an asian guy that likes math well i mean i'm calling bullshit on that by the way not on the asian thing he's obviously asian but while he might excel at math and be good at it I don't see how anyone could actually enjoy it. Like, wouldn't you rather just have... I don't know. Maybe some people like to be problem... I'm a problem solver. But anyhow. Like, I've seen so much of these people that... I'm actually in my head thinking, you know, this freedom dividend thing. <laughs> and it's so fucking whacked. <laughs> and I get it. We are... That is the future. Like, that... But that's not... That's not the hill we can afford to die on in this in this political climate. We can't afford the hill to die on is not going to be the freedom dividend. I'm sorry. And now let's talk about sometimes I ask myself what am I on earth one is this like am I on a different earth? Because check this out, right? I'm watching the debates, and Kamala Harris, I'm sorry, Kamala Harris, Kamala is the wrestler, but I've heard so many people mispronounce it that I say it, Kamala Harris, she was swinging off on Joe Biden, as, you know, as she's been doing, because that's what she does, whatever, you know, you swing up, and then, you hear a chirping coming from over here. And it's Vladimir Putin's bud, Tulsi Gabbard, coming up here talking about Kamala Harris's record as a prosecutor. And I've heard this from people in California a lot. Maybe it's a California thing. But. People in, I mean, you know, some people think that thoughts can't evolve. That things can't change. 
Um, I work in a stock room. If I put I put things on shelves, if in a couple of years, putting things on shelves is no longer in vogue and it's shunned upon and it's something that people stop doing. It's not my fault that I did that when that was my job. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I understand. Listen, she was a prosecutor. She wasn't a politician at that time. She could not change the laws. All she could do was enforce them. I think it's much ado about nothing. Whereas Tulsi Gabbard, on the other hand, is a lot more dangerous being in this race right now because she's got all these fucking, you know, pardon my French, but these... The, the libertarians? Oh my god. What a what a group of insufferable people these assholes are. I mean, really. <laughs> like the 9-11 truthers? That's who she's got. You know? Tulsi Gabbard. She's got this... It's the Rand Paul thing. It's the... I'm gonna have... Uh, it's, it's presenting a, a, a phony anti-war platform... In order to cozy up to authoritarian dictators and fucking murderers like Assad and fucking Putin, okay? That's what that is. Tulsi Gabbard is friends with those people. Tul people who support Tulsi Gabbard claim that Assad didn't gas his own people. I mean, what planet am I on where... There is a presidential candidate who cozies up to Assad and somehow we're, talk we're sitting here talking about this. I mean, I just think that's absolutely absurd in my book. I mean, I haven't... I mean, I usually rail against independent voters, but these libertarians... <laughs> the, the thing that was spawned out of the 9-11 truthers, but the people that are too scared to be in the Tea Party... Like... That is some fucking unreal, insufferable, insufferable, like, everybody, you know, you can't just everybody sucks, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, I say this here on August 3rd, Tulsi Gabbard is going to run third party and she's going to claim that the DNC screwed her. That's what she's going to do. She's going to claim that the liberal media and... You know, and uh, other Democratic candidates got together and screwed us. She's going to use the Bernie Sanders platform, except she's not going to... And Bernie Sanders wasn't actually a dickhead enough to run as an independent that time. But she's going to Jill Stein it. And that's how that's going to go. And, anybody, and, and she's going to get people... And you saw the trolls and bots were out. If you trash Tulsi Gabbard on Twitter, you will all of a sudden get emails from, like, you know, your different services, whether it be Netflix or whatever, or whatever email, to reset your password all of a sudden. You know, which is oddly enough. It's not a real thing. That's somebody trying to hack into your email and, you know, give that information to WikiLeaks so they can make you stop smearing the person that they want to promote. See... Putin's game now is not, let me do everything I can to hack minds into voting Trump. His game now is to, now let me get the Russian Democrat in there as well. Like, the, let me get, let me get a Russian Assad. And that would be Tulsi Gabbard. So that's what that is. So you need to pay attention. People that fought in war don't act, I mean... Listen, there's no draft, right? I mean, I don't want to offend anybody because I respect the troops and I honor them. And I appreciate everything they do fighting for our freedom. But there's not a draft. So therefore, Tulsi Gabbard signed up to go defend her country. And then she got back and all she does is complain about it? I mean, I'm just saying. Were there, was the... Was you getting saluted every time you walk in a room not good enough for you? You got elected to Congress. And nobody that served in war comes home saying we gotta... I mean, they come home saying we gotta end all wars. Then why are you friends with Putin and Assad? I don't understand it. It's a Rand Paul thing. 
It's the libertarian thing. Oh, we sh- Like, I understand that we shouldn't go around being the, you know, making other countries believe in what we believe in. But I'm talking about Assad gasses his own people. You know, it's about human rights at this point. It's not about, you know, oh, well, we're going in there and shoving our noses in there. No, we're not. We're, we don't want people to die. And that's it. I'm not saying go in there with any nuclear airstrikes or anything. And I'm not saying sending send millions or whatever troops over there. I don't know how many soldiers are in a troop. I don't know how it works. <coughs> but I'm just saying that we could not have endless wars and also not cozy up to authoritarian dictators. They're not, you know, they're they're one they're not the same thing. We can do both. Like Buttigieg. Buttigieg served. He's not over there cozying up to Assad and Putin and saying, oh well, you know. Assad didn't gas his own people. Who did then? Who did? Oh well, Jay, you know, the US government and the CIA came up with a plan to stop. There's too much on the line in this election for fucking conspiracy theories. I'm gonna need you to call it, I'm gonna need you in this election cycle to just pay attention to what the person says and go with it and, and like, and, and trust it. Go, like, listen to it, have it vetted by people, you know, watch, you know, read, read your news sources that are worthy, your trustworthy news sources. Read them. Read up about the things that these politicians are saying. And make your determination. Because here's the thing. When Trump gets on TV, he's telling straight lies that are lies that you know from Jump Street are lies. There's no fact check even needed. So, again, like I said, out of the 20 Democratic candidates, there's like 16 of them that are way better for America. Like, yo... If Bill de, Blas Bill de Blasio is a joke, right? He's an absolute joke. But if he was the president of the United States of America, this country would be fucking lit, yo. Facts. No cap. It would be lit. Alright? There'd be, you know, pre-K from age from like six months to fucking 20 years old. You know what I'm saying? You would never see your kids. You don't have to. It's free. I'm telling you, man. It would be, it would be dope. But people like Tulsi Gabbard... Uh, fucking Tim Ryan, because he's one of the five white guys. These are people that you need to stay away from. And honestly, like, even though the policies, you know, have been adopted in some way or form by other candidates, Bernie Sanders is a caricature of himself in 2019. And in 2020, if he was the nominee, Bernie Sanders would lose 40 states. And then he would claim it's rigged. And then he would sound more like Trump than he already does. That's not something we need. We don't need a populist message. We need a message that is the truth. And the truth is that Democrats care about people. We don't want people in cages. We want people to have health care. We don't want people locked up on, for unnecessary reasons. We don't want racial inequality, wealth inequality. We want justice for Eric Gardner. If you didn't see me on the local news yesterday here in New York, NBC, I was on. I'll share the video. It's just a really important election coming up. So we can't be on Twitter tearing each other down. And canceling people out, like... What we have... We have Warren, Harris, Biden, Beto, even Booty Juice, and Cory Booker, Castro. These are all people that are prospective great presidents. And don't lose sight of that. Don't... Uh, let me, Jilly Beans with the Clorox line. That was good. I loved it. I liked it. 
And I don't think that she would fare badly in a general. I'm coming around. Yeah, man, we got choices. And there's a lot of choices. But at the same time, as long as we can make sure that we understand that it's not Tulsi hype, it's Russian bots doing overtime in St. Petersburg. If we realize that that's a thing, and you just block that out, and together, we can take our country back next year. Dies in your house. Exclusively. On Least Coast Radio.